in this video lecture we will see the overview of important Indian standard codal provisions which are required in the design of structural members such as the design of isolated footing, column, beam, slab and the staircase. Whereas we can also see the design procedure for the structural members. Because from the next video we will start over the design work for the design of isolated footing, design of column, design of beam, design of slab and the design of staircase. So what we are going to do? We are importing the ETAPS analysis data and with respect to that analysis results we will design the structural members. So for that here we require codal provisions of Indian standard to design the structural sections. So understanding of these codal provisions is very important in the design procedure. So here you can see first of all we will see the important codal provisions for the design of structural members as per IS 456-2000. So the first important codal provision is that area of steel required formula for the under reinforced sections as per annex G. So as a structural engineer you should design the structural members as the under reinforced section in case of the earthquake prone areas because the under reinforced section has the advantages over the balance section and the over reinforced section. So for the under reinforced section to calculate the area of steel for the further design we have the formula in the annex G. So here you can see this is the IS 456-2000 in which this is the annex G. So here in the clause G.1.1 we have the formula to calculate area of steel required that is mu is equal to 0.87 fy area of steel into d in the bracket 1 minus area of steel into fy upon bd into fck by inputting the value of the mu that is from ETAPS analysis results whereas we know that the section properties for the materials and the section sizes that is for b d fy and fck so by inputting the values here in these equation we got the area of steel required that is ast so this is the very important formula you need to kept in your mind for the design of isolated footing, beams, slabs and the staircase. Next important codal provision is that minimum reinforcements for the slab sections as per clause 26.5.2.1. So here you can see the clause 26.5.2.1 that is minimum reinforcements for the slab sections. So with respect to the grade of steel as the reinforcement we need to consider minimum reinforcements. In case of the mild steel that is Fe250 we need to consider the area of steel minimum as 0.15 to the total cross section area that is 0.15 into small b into capital D. Whereas in case of the high strength deformed bars that is HYST bars means Fe415 and Fe500 that means here we need to consider the minimum area of steel as 0.12%. So this is very important codal provisions in case of isolated footings, slabs and staircase to check the area of steel as we calculated as per design. So the next important codal provision is that spacing for the main steel for the slab as per clause 26.3.3.b.1 and the spacing for the distribution of steel for the slab as per clause 26.3.3.b.2. Many of the students are confused in between these codal provisions that I will explain you right now. So here you can see the clause 26.3.3 .3, that is for the maximum distance between the bars in the tension. That is for the spacing for the slabs here it is the codal provision. So the first codal provision is for the main steel and the another codal provision is for the distribution steel. That means for the two way slab you only need to follow this codal provision because in the case of two way slab we provide the main steel along the both direction. But whereas in the case of one way slab we provide the distribution steel along the longer direction and this main steel along the shorter direction. So in case of one way slab for the shorter direction you need to provide the spacing as per these codal provision and for the distribution bars in the longer direction you need to provide the spacing as per these codal provisions. So here it is the spacing for the main reinforcements that is main steel is should not more than the three times effective depth of the slab or 300 mm whichever is smaller and in case of the distribution steel that is reinforcement bar provided against the shrinkage and the temperature we need to provide the minimum distribution steel as 5 times effective depth of slab or 450 mm whichever is lesser whereas we can also calculate the spacing as per the design area of steel required ok so with respect to these three values for the spacing we need to provide the minimum spacing in case of the slabs as per clause 26.3.3b Next important codal provision is that pitch and diameter of lateral ties for the column which is as per clause 26.5.3.2.c. So here you can see the clause 26.5.3.2 which is for the transverse reinforcements. 
so here you can see the point C for the pitch and the diameter of lateral dies. So in case of columns, the pitch that is nothing but means spacing of the lateral dies that should not exceed the least lateral dimension of the compression member that is the sides of the column or the 16 times smallest diameter of longitudinal bar used or the 300 mm. So with respect to these three conditions, you need to provide the pitch for the lateral dies in case of the columns as per the design of IS-456-2000. Whereas if you provide this SMRF that is special moment resisting frame, then you need to provide the pitch as per IS-13920-2016. Whereas the diameter of lateral ties you should provide as per the codal provisions here that is the diameter of lateral ties shall not be less than one fourth of the diameter of largest longitudinal bar that is one by four of the largest longitudinal bar used in the column or in no case it should not be more than 16 mm. So by considering these two codal provisions you need to provide the diameter of lateral ties. The next important total provision is that permissible shear stresses as per clause 31.6.3. So here it is the codal provisions for the permissible shear stress that is tau c as per clause 31.6.3 here it is the value of tau c is 0.25 under root fck. This is a very important value in case of designing of the structural members. So the next important total provisions are for the shear that is nominal shear stresses as per clause 40.1. Design shear strength as per table number 19 and the design shear reinforcements as per clause 40.4. So here you can see clause 40 is for limit state of collapse for shear under which the clause 40.1 states that the formula for the nominal shear stress that is tau v which is equal to vu upon bd whereas vu is equal to the shear force due to the design loads. Whereas the value of tau c that is design shear strength which is very important in case of the design of structural members is with respect to the percentage of steel and the grade of concrete. So with respect to the percentage of steel and the grade of concrete we need to calculate the value by the linear interpolation if the value is in between these values. Whereas IS-456-2000 allows you to design three different types of shear reinforcements are vertical stirrups, bent up bars along with the stirrups and inclined stirrups. So here in the clause 40.4 we have the codal provisions to design for the shear reinforcements. So here we have the different formulas to calculate the spacings for the shear reinforcements. So these are the some of the important codal provisions that we required in the design of structural elements. Whereas some of the other codal provisions also we required that we'll discuss while designing that particular structural element. Now we'll see the design procedure for the structural members. So first of all we'll see the design of isolated footing as per IS-456-2000. So now I will give you the procedure we are using to design the isolated footing. So in the design of isolated footing, we'll first of all note down the axial forces values from the E-tabs at the base of the structure. That means whatever the axial forces which is coming at the base of structure that will import from the E-tabs. So after importing these data, we'll use these data for the design of isolated footing. With respect to that axial force, we'll calculate the area of footing by considering the safe bearing capacity of soil and the self weight of the footing. And then we'll calculate the depth of footing as per one way shear. As you know that we need to check the depth of footing as per one way shear and two way shear. So here we'll calculate the depth of footing as per one way shear and then we'll check that depth with respect to the two way shear. So in the way we'll satisfy the both condition. So after that we'll check the depth of footing as we calculated as per one way shear for the two way shear conditions. After that we'll check for the gross bearing capacity. Then we will proceed for the reinforcement design that is for area of steel required as per annex G. And we'll compare the area of steel required as per the annex G with respect to the area of steel minimum as per the codal provisions of Indian standard. And after that we'll calculate the spacing and we'll check that minimum spacing as per the codal provisions of IS-456-2000. And at the end, we'll detail the footing. So this is the complete procedure we'll follow for the design of isolated footing. Now let's see the procedure that we'll use for the design of column. So for the design of column, we need SP-16 and IS-456-2000. So here, SP-16 gives us the value of MUX1 and MUY1 with respect to the interaction curves. That will be discussed while designing the column. So what is the procedure that we are going to follow? That is first of all we will note down the axial forces and the biaxial bending values from the E-tabs. After importing the analysis data we will proceed for the design. So first of all we will assume the percentage of steel for the column as per the example 8 which is provided in the SP16 on the page number 105. So with respect to that example 
will design our all columns. So as per SP16, first of all, we will calculate the d dash by d value. And with respect to that, with respect to the interaction curves provided in the SP16, with respect to the grade of steel, we will find the mu by fck bd square value. After that, we will calculate the mu x1 and mu y1 values. After calculating mu x1 and mu y1 values, we will apply the check for the section 3 of SP16. And after that, we will provide the pitch and the diameter of lateral ties for the column as per IS456-2000 in the clause 26.5.3.2.C. After that, we will detail the column. Okay, in case of special moment resisting frame, we need to provide the ductile detailing as per IS139-20-2016, which is provided under the clause 8.1. Now we will see the design procedure for the beams. So for the beams, we will follow the IS456-2000. So first of all, we will note down the positive and negative bending moments and the shear forces values from the E-tabs. After importing the analysis data, we will provide the area of steel for the bottom bars with respect to the positive bending moment as per the formula given in the annex G. Then we will provide the shear reinforcements for the shear force that we import from the E-tabs analysis results as per clause 40.4 of IS456-2000. Then we will provide the area of steel required for the top bars at the support with respect to the negative bending moment as per the annex G formula provided in the IS456-2000 and at the end we will detail the beam. Whereas for the special moment resisting frame we need to provide the ductile detailing. So for that we need to follow the codal provisions of IS139-20-2016 of figure 6. So this is the complete procedure for the design of beams. In case of the slabs, we will follow the IS456-2000. So first of all, we will note down the values of MUX and MUY from the ETAPS analysis results. With respect to these values, we will calculate the area of steel required in the X direction and the area of steel required in the Y direction as per the annex G. Whereas, we will check the area of steel with respect to the area of steel minimum as per the codal provisions of Indian standard. And then we will check the torsional reinforcement requirement as per the condition of the slab. In the case of slab, we need to apply some checks such as check for deflection as per clause 23.2.1 and figure 4 of IS456-2000, check for shear as per clause 40.1 and 40.3 of IS456-2000 and check for development length as per clause 26.2.3.3. Okay, and at the end we will detail the slab. So for the design of staircase, we will follow the IS456-2000. So for the design of staircase, we do not import the analysis results from the ETAPS. We design the staircase by the manual calculation. You can also design the staircase by yourself as we design the slab. But to give you the complete design procedure, I will design the staircase by the manual calculations with respect to the gravity loads such as dead load, superimposed dead load and the live load. So in case of staircase, first of all, we need to calculate the loads and then we'll calculate the bending moment. So first of all, we need to calculate the dead load of the staircase. Then we'll calculate the superimposed dead load, which is coming over the staircase. And we need to consider the live load as per IS 875 part 2, 1987. Then with respect to the dead load, superimposed dead load and the live load, we need to consider the design load. And with respect to that design load, we need to calculate the maddening moment. So after that, we need to calculate the area of steel required for the main steel and the distribution steel as per Annex G and the codal provision of Indian standard for the area of steel minimum. After that, we need to provide the spacing for the main steel and the distribution steel as per the formula area of 1 bar into 1000 upon area of steel required. And we need to check that spacing with respect to the clause 26.3.3. After designing the staircase, we need to check the staircase for the shear as per clause 40.1 and 40.3 of IS456-2000. Then we need to check the staircase for the deflection as per clause 23.2.1 and figure 4. And then we need to apply the check for the development length as per clause 26 of IS456-2000 and at the end we need to detail the staircase. So in the way we will design the structural members as per IS456-2000 and SP-16. So here in this video lecture we will see the important codal provisions and the design procedure for the structural members.